welcome back to the round table. I'm Ostrich Vox, and we all got played. Well, kinda. This past Wednesday, May 15th, was the first ever Warner Media upfront. That's right. Last year, AT&T purchased Turner Broadcasting. So, Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, TBS, all those good shows got absorbed into one big company, which of course they renamed it to Warner Media. Assumably because of this, we did not get an upfront by Turner in March, so we didn't get any pop in cartoon news as soon as we expected. In case you're wondering what an upfront is, it's an annual press release where a network reveals their slate for upcoming programming. What shows are coming back? What shows are ending? What are the brand new shows? Up front, like this is how we found out shows like Infinity Train got greenlit, and how we get details on upcoming episodes of shows like Steven Universe. Last year's upfront revealed that Steven Universe would have three arcs throughout the year, which ended up being the April episodes, concluding in a single pearl rose, Steven Universe Heart of the Crystal Gems, and Steven Universe Diamond Days, which carried over into 2019. The year before that, the upfront had a synopsis that alluded towards the events of the fifth season, and 2016 up front informed us of the Summer of Steven event. As we approach the Steve Universe movie and the sixth season of the series, it only made sense that the upfront this year would give us brand new information on the show, alongside other shows like OK KO, Victor and Valentino, Teen Titans Go, things that fans of the network were looking forward to. Well, the upfront came and we got nothing? No, like literally. It's not like Cartner had announcements that the audience just didn't care for. It more or less just wasn't present. And it doesn't just go for Cartner, but pretty much all of the Turner networks. Like, they touched a little bit on some major programming coming up, including Rick and Morty Season 4, but despite the Warner Media upfront website itself saying that we would get a programming slate on 2019 to 2020, four of these networks under Warner Media, we didn't get Zip, which is really weird because it was the first ever Warner Media upfront. They promoted it as such. They had a movie truck going around with a Rick and Morty portal drink and a Steve Universe drink. We got Rick and Morty news, yet Steven's presence was minimal, only popping up at the very end, with a slide that more or less just gave it praise, and I mean, this event was huge. Daniel Radcliffe was there, Conan O'Brien was there, and a few other celebrities. This upfront was a nugget of hope for many animation fans. Maybe we would get a date for Infinity Train. Maybe we would learn of the other shows Cartoon Network has greenlit. Maybe we'll finally know when Steve Universe is coming back, or a month for the movie. Instead, we got none of that, and it's kind of frustrating. However, Cartoon Network is not alone, as Disney had their upfront the day prior, and Disney Channel was left out of that upfront as well, so we didn't get any animation news. However, the following day saw a press release for Amphibia in particular, confirming the series for a second season. However, we're gonna make another video all about that. Now, I think the reason these children networks are excluded from the upfront presentation is simply because these upfronts are for advertisers, and they may be more interested in the big guns. Show me what you really got. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, because of the stigma adults hold towards animation, they may not see Disney Channel as something advertisers will be totally engrossed in. Yet, it's weird that if you look at all these big networks, including Nickelodeon, no one really got a traditional upfront programming slate this year. Now, for Cartoon Network in particular, not all hope is lost. If the Amphibia press release is any indication, we could get a proper upfront slate within the following weeks. I would love that. Obviously, we as fans hold upfronts to a different standard than advertisers or consumers generally do. We want we want to know what's up. We want to know what's going to hit our television screens or tablets, streaming services. However, television has been in a really weird period right now. Even at the Warner Media upfront, they acknowledged that, yeah, streaming is kind of the future. Traditional cable is on its way out. But I really hope upfront press releases aren't also on the way out. It would be kind of heartbreaking if they were. I think the biggest question is just, where do we go on from here? Because even beyond just TV universes and OKKOs, OK just in general for network animation, we're kind of left in the dark in the moment. What's really weird to me is that beyond the Rick and Morty trailer, it felt like there was clearly going to be some kind of press release, as Adult Swim officially revealed their upcoming animated series, Primal, the day prior to the upfront, which was indicating to me we would get an in-depth press release for every single thing in their programming slate. Alas, that was not the case, but give it a week or two, it could still be the case. Now, since the this was Warner Media's first year, well, as Warner Media giving an up for a presentation, we should cut them a little bit of slack. They're probably under a lot of stress trying to rearrange everything and figure everything out. There's probably a lot of reorganization, a lot of reconstruction going on internally. So let's just be patient. Our animation news will come to us. And hey, we're already in May, guys, entering the end of it, actually. So if you guys can just get through June and a few weeks of July, we're going to have San Diego Comic-Con, which I'm sure will be jam-packed with clips of this TV Universe movie. And 
Infinity Train, Victor and Valentino, anything your heart desires. Although yeah, an upfront still would have been nice. Comment down below your thoughts. Are you disappointed by the lack of a proper upfront press release? Do you think we can still get it? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, or tweet your thoughts at RoundtableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at Asher Fox. We're also on Instagram. Help the Roundtable grow by either becoming a member of the channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. Asher Fox, signing out. Hey everyone, just letting you know over a pre-recorded message that we will be at MomoCon 2019. We'll be there all four days, but I know what you're thinking. What about the panels? And to that, my friend, I have an answer. Friday at 2.30 will be on the Channel Frederator panel, talking about our experiences as content creators. Then on Saturday at 4 p.m., we have the first ever animation showcase with a bunch of other content creators in the cartoon community. Cosmodor, Robotaxi, Nintendo, Saber Spark, you name it. We'll be showing off a bunch of animated projects, such as Hasbun Hotel, whose creator will also be there, Logon Gulch, Amoda and Nepsen, and more. And yes, we will be showing a exclusive footage you cannot see anywhere else. Well, I mean, until the actual panel, where I'm sure it'll be live streamed and you can- But you guys get the point. After that, our final panel will be Saturday at 7. Another Steven Universe of the Fan of this panel. Us, Mackenzie Atwood, Slice of Otaku, Rose's Universe, and Michaela Deese, the voice of Amethyst. Oh yeah, did I mention this TV Universe cast will be there? Zach Callison, Dee Dee Magna Hall, Michaela Deets, and Estelle. Well, Estelle's only gonna be on Thursday, but Estelle. Get hyped for Momocon, guys. It's so close, and I have a feeling it'll be one of the best years yet. Hope to see some of your beautiful faces there.